She goes, you don't come in this house. You stay on the fucking porch. You're not coming in this house. Well, we're two hours away from my house, right? We're two hours away. So for a week, it was like five days straight. Literally, I slept out on the deck every night. Listen, she wouldn't let me in the house. My hands steady, I feel ready, but my legs heavy. I don't get it. How come I haven't hit it already? Still working. I'm still. All right. So we first uh, we first met you at the Volt Conference about three months ago, and uh, I've been following your content for years now. Like I said, I'm a sales director, so I use a lot of training. I've stolen a lot of your shit. Thank you for that. putting it on YouTube. Yeah, um, I actually want you to steal it. Yeah. Uh, when we first met you at the vault, you got up on stage and handed PBD or Patrick Bet David a forty thousand dollar Hublot mm -hmm. watch, which was pretty goddamn badass. Yeah, I gotta ask, was it planned? How'd that come up? What happened? Like, what was that all about? Um, so one of the things is that anytime that I will go see someone, mm -hmm. I want to bring them something. Yep. Okay, especially if there's somebody that's played any effect in my life. Um, so the first time I went to the vault, which was two years before. Um, I brought a big chess board because obviously Patrick is always about playing chess. So we found this cool, maybe like four or five grand chess board, right? And um, it, was, it was really cool. Like it was really neat looking. Whether he ever used it or gave it to one of his guys, um, I wanted to, to, to bring it to him, you know, just say, hey, I appreciate you. So we did the VIP deal. You know, I gave it to him afterwards. Yep. And uh, he was like, dude, this is cool, man. And really, I just wanted to say thank you. And I had to carry that bitch all the way through the airport. He was like, this fucking thing, right? So I was like, all right, next time I'm not bringing a chessboard or something big. And I got to get a little bit more creative too, right? So I, uh, I was in the Hublot store and um, Breitling, Hublot, they're kind of all tied together. There's a string. But then there's the, this watch and it was really cool. It had like a workout wristband, right? Mm. But also a cool face. And I was like, dude, okay, that's a businessman's watch hanging out with the family. Mm. right Got and it. anyways I, I i wanted it i was like i'm gonna buy that watch for me and then i was like wait i'm gonna buy that watch for pat mm. so anyway so we bought it for him and it was planned to give it to him um the night before or yeah. or, or the, that night at the vip deal um but i was talking to mario his right hand guy yep. and i was like hey mario i was like why don't we just give it to him on stage why don't a lot of these people here right like that need to level up like why don't we grow them up real quick why don't we let them see that, like, you guys aren't coming in here to be, you know, Patrick's like, you guys aren't puppets. Like, you guys are the gener the next generation to grow. Like, you right. guys need to level up. You guys need to buy CEO tickets next year. Like, you guys need to invest in yourself more. You guys need to go deeper with Patrick. And it's the truth. He is the, he is the OG. Yeah, I remember you guys said that. Yeah, he's the OG. Goat. So, yeah. and he changed my life, and he still changes my life to this day. I study him every day. So, I just wanted to give him something to say thank you. And, dude, the monument... Like, I could have spent a million dollars. You can't buy someone something that has a lot of money where there's value attached to it. So I try to think about something, but I heard him say, if you study somebody, we always say listen to our customers because they'll tell us, you know, like how to Everything sell Everything you need to yeah. hear. Yep. And I uh, I heard him say one time he had never had a Hublot. So I thought, okay, cool. Because a lot of people buy Rolexes, right? You know, and they buy different stuff, you know, and a lot of businessmen buy Rolexes, you know, because they're expensive, they're harder to find, you know, they hold their value better, they don't depreciate like Hublots. So I was just like, dude, I'm going to buy him something I know he doesn't have. So yep. I just bought him a cool watch and I told him, I said, hey, go work out in it. I know he loves to work out. And then obviously they'll spend time with his family. So I think it'd be a cool watch in which, you know, hopefully if he wore it, he'd be like, oh, Andy got me that watch. You'll see it. You'll you know? see it on a reel or something. Yeah, that brings us to our next question. You know, you went there the first year. I'm sure you got a lot out of it. And now this next year you came, you're growing at such a rate. It's incredible. What did you go to the vault for to take away? And what did you end up leaving with? Because I know every time we go, we go for one thing and we leave with 10 things. Yeah. So like truly total recreation is something that we say like in every video. Like I know you guys have language that you yep. use a lot for your people. And when you say that, they know that that's your language. My language is total recreation. I believe in recreating every day and becoming better every day, not sometimes every day. And um, Patrick talked about future truth. And I said that when I gave him this, I said, hey, future truth is like, hey, who do you guys want to be? Become clear about it. And then you need to become that now so that that can actually happen. And it's just the best lie you've ever told yourself. Then one day you're not telling a lie. So every time I go, you know, he talks about from having like employees and a team and people, how important leadership is mm. and how, you know, people will work for, you know, an employer for, you know, money, right? They'll work for a paycheck, but they'll work for the leader for blood, sweat and tears. And if you're going to build an empire, um, you're going to need to know how to build a team. And I am ate up and geeked up about building a team. Also, I love the way he speaks. Oh, yeah. I love the he way. He can command a room. Yeah. Like, so, so, but that to me. 
is so important, man, because I want to explain to you the difference between you, you, and me, and all the other 9 billion people in this world is the way that we can deliver our message. And you may have something great to say, but you can't deliver it effectively to get it through to somebody to make them want to take action on it. So one of the things, one of the greatest speakers that I know is Patrick Bett David. So when I go there, I'm, I'm obviously in the book. I've studied the book. I'm, I'm learning everything that he's teaching us. But man, just the way he delivers, like everything that I see him talk about, I also watch the delivery because mm. the delivery is where the money's made. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video right? Like mm -hmm. the information that he talks about already exists on the market, but the way he delivers it doesn't exist, which is how Patrick Bet David was built. Yeah. How he's grown. Yeah. It's his delivery, man. And, and, and you know, he's not lying to you. Like, you know, he's telling you the truth and like, you know, that he wants you to know this for your own good and you can see it in his eyes. And it's as if he's almost like wearing his soul on his sleeve. And I just love that. Yeah. He's extremely so that's what, so Yeah. So that's why I took about, I took away. And by the way, um, there's some things that in life you can watch through like um, a podcast or some things in life that you can watch through a video training. Some shit you just need to see face to face. Yeah. Like Will Gadara. Yeah. Like, but so whatever it is, each year when the vault comes, I want to go, I want to sit in the seats and I want to learn. I want to be a student. You know, I work so hard on building everything and I'm applying everything he's taught me all year long and everything I believe in all year long. But then it's good to just shut your mouth and to go sit down and people are like, oh, hey, why are you here? Dude, people are lost. The greatest <laughs> advice that Patrick ever had given anybody was out self-develop everybody and that everybody is gonna self-develop just enough to make it just enough money to get the dream that they have and then they're gonna slow down and then they're gonna stop learning. And that's why you have to keep learning. That's why you have to stay obsessed with learning. That's why learning has to be like total immersion. Then dude, if you think that it's exhausting and if you think it gets tiring, you're going to start losing. And eventually you're going to go backwards and eventually end up being exactly where you started. So yeah. like, so like, I just have to keep doing it. And yeah. like, so he's a mentor that I've chosen. That's going to be a lifetime mentor for me. Yeah. He's, a, he's a great one. You he's, can't he's outgrow already, the son of a bitch. I think yeah, no. he's my favorite one by a landslide yeah. right now, just because again, his delivery and the way he puts on that show for everyone. It's yeah, he, there's so much value. in He's the dude, days. man. Yeah. And, and, and he's and, so versatile. Yeah, and, and and he's like, dude, he's like, bet on you. Like, come on, dude. Like, yeah. are you worth it? Like, come yeah. on, bet on you. And, you know, and when he talks about, like, making bold moves yeah. and shit like that, like, I like that, man. It's kind of like, that shit gets me horny. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, yeah, fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's go take some risk. Yeah. Like, I need someone to make me take risk. Like, yeah. like I need it. I need someone to remind me, um, uh, you know, about, like, the madness, the craziness, the, the what they, you know, what they said. You know, when he had yeah. Tom Brady. Remember when he had Tom Brady? Yeah. On stage, uh, yeah, and Tom, <laughs> sure and Tom Brady goes, "What did they look like?" Yeah, he's like, "And what did they say?" Yeah, he's like, "Oh, I just want to freaking kill him." Yeah, and I was like, "Dude, like, he's like, that's it. Like, he's all obsessed with his team, and he's like envisioning, like, what did they say? What did they look like? Who were they? You know, like, and he just wants to kill him, and like that." You know, like that was something that I took away from Tom Brady. And I got the yeah. clip of that yeah. and I sent it to my team every morning. And I'm like, make sure you guys watch this 15 times and go punch someone in the face. Because it's time <laughs> to go to work. In the face. So yeah. let's transition that to you then. When when we think Andy Elliott, we think eight pack and eight figures. Yeah. And so you had it all. Why didn't you stop there? What drives you to help other people achieve that? Yeah. So like, dude, you'll make money and you'll learn that a lot of people with money are miserable. Also, a lot of people, they are. I know a lot of people right now that have money that have literally lost the loves of their lives. Lack of purpose, I think. Yeah, but listen, well, but let's talk about some things that they lost that were more valuable than money, okay? So I've got three kids and I've got a wife, okay? But if I gain money and my children don't re don't look up to me anymore and I'm not their hero, to me, I'm the brokest man in the room. Mm. And I'm telling you, it's going to hit one day, okay? It's going to hit one day, all right? That money's going to get old at some point, okay? But when you see your kids, dude, and they don't want to talk to you no more and they don't want to take advice from you and they don't want to look up to you, like, dude, it's going to hit. Okay, so like, trust me, like you you need to understand the goal is to get it all. Yep. Okay, so we need to be, and, and the key, I'm gonna explain why I don't stop. The key is to be present because we can have it all and there are no limits. And once you get to a mountain, if you don't create another mountaintop, within due time, you'll lose it all. 
And people that are, are growers, people that want to go to the next level, people that are impact players, people that are world changers, dude, we live off the next thrill. Like we live off the next challenge. Like the minute that there's challenges that aren't in front of me, like honestly, dude, I'm afraid what will happen to me. There was a time in my life that I was dead and I didn't like me. Okay, so I don't, and at those times I didn't have big crazy dreams. And dude, I don't ever want to go back to that. So I just want to say to you guys like, the only time that people settle is when their dreams aren't very big. People with small dreams settle. People with small dreams stop. So if it's eight, 10, a billion dollars, a trillion, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a million employees, if it's one employee, if it's, if it's, if it's what, if it's a six pack, if it's a 20 pack, if it's gain a lot of muscle, whatever it is, there just has to be more, 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 more. And, and it's not because of greed. It's just because I know there's more potential. Like God is our father. So like how, like we can't be disrespectful to him. I know he put more out there for us. And I just want to prove to other people as an example that it's there um, to, to, to get. Now, the biggest thing is the most fulfilling thing in this world is is helping people get their best life. So like, that's the reason why I say like there's so many people that are out there giving out information who aren't doing what they say. And a lot of the times when you guys meet these people, dude, they're not really who they say they are. And they're not really treating people the way that they said they were. And all the information that they said was something that they stole from someone else. And that's really not how they're living. And that's why when you guys came out here, you said, hey, your, your team onboarded us with so much love and they're cool and they're and they have so much energy and all that. Yeah, dude, because that's what we want because that's what we live for. And like, that's the way we're going to roll until they bury us, yep. mm. you know? Um, but, but one of the things though is uh, not being one dimensional. Okay. Like my wife, one time she checked me and uh, you said, why do, why do I not stop? Because my wife knows that I have a lot in me. And so she reminds me every day. She's like, dude, you're just getting started. And plus she also reminds me because she's very truthful that there's someone out there that what we've gotten and what we've built, we've just inspired them to get it themselves. Mm. And those, those motherfuckers are right on our heels and they want what we have and they're willing to do whatever it takes also to get what we have. So we must stay grounded. We must stay humble. We must take care of our children. We must take care of our team. We must continue to dream and dream bigger. We must continue to work hard. Our efforts must be insane. Um, we must take good care of our physical health. We must stay close to God. Um, we must keep our word. You know, we just all these you guys right. Yeah. That was the Ten Commandments right there from Andy Yelly. That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's, that's how you become my wall. unkillable. And the change yeah. in lives thing too. Once you get a taste of it, it's mm. like talk about energy. There's no. It's fucking electric when you change somebody's life. When I started in sales, first you change your own life, and then you change one other person's life, mm -hmm. and you're like, holy shit. I got to go do this. I got to Now you want to be a teacher yeah. every day. It's the most fulfilling yeah. thing so in I the world. So I stepped into the management role. We're yeah. doing solar right now. You know how lucrative yeah. the business is. Yeah. I could have sat back, made my three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, but no. I helped one person like by accident. He was like, yo, I want to come do what you're doing. I did it. That was more gratifying to me yeah, than anything. I took care of him and the money mm -hmm. showed up. Exactly. And then as you continue to do that, it's weird. You take care of other people and then your, your needs are taken care of in turn somehow, probably just through God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is through God. And plus you guys are, uh, if you're good at what you do, well, how do you even get better at it? Because look, you can only get so good by doing it. You become better by teaching it. Oh yeah. Like Ooh. that's, that's the, like, that's the ultimate deal. And that's why like, I'm the, one of the reasons truthfully, and I don't talk about this a lot, but why I'm so dangerous at objection handling or doing certain things is just because I teach it all the time. So I'm getting like 10,000 more reps in than anyone. Mm. I'm putting myself in the middle of any room, any day. And I'm like, dude, blast me, hit me, do whatever, you know, like, like, like any industry. And because I'm getting the reps in, I'm, I'm teaching it a lot. That's how I keep getting better. So I want to share this quote with you Tell me. that I added on to. There's a, there's a quote that's, I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. And then I added it and I might've stole this. I don't even know. I, in my head, I, I, uh -huh. I made this. You end it with, I teach, I master. Because that is absolutely true, what you just said. It's like, you don't know something well enough unless you can teach it. That's it. Yeah. And Kobe Bryant mastered basketball. We must master sales and leadership. Mm. Those are the two things that are going to impact the entire world, yep. change generations. And also, uh, I mean, if we want to live a wealthy life, I mean, if you want to get rich, learn sales and leadership. If you can learn to sell, you can get rich. It's the ultimate mm. key to life. Mm -hmm. and ultimate then, key to life. And then especially in a world full of sales, sales isn't enough. In the beginning it is. But then if you want to go to the master level to really make big money, you got to learn how to lead. And it doesn't matter what you sell because they follow the leader. And the leader is somebody that works, that they follow voluntarily without money involved. 
because they believe in you, because you're the mentor. It has nothing to do with money. That's why I always tell people, I'm like, if you can recruit somebody on my team, I'll give you 10 million cash because yeah. they don't mm, work for money. I've seen this show but, before. But they don't work for money. Like, And people say, what do you mean? That's stupid. No, it's not stupid, dude. Everybody in this world wants to find where they belong, You know, something they believe in. They want to be fucking happy, dude. And if you can help people find that, or or even better, because I, I train underdogs. Like That's my biggest deal. I'm an underdog. Um, my li- My wife changed my life, so I'm like indebted to her. So anytime I can change someone else's life, like naturally, I already know how they feel. I put, look, I'm going to give you guys a, a sneak, like close that I do in any situation. If you want to close anybody in any situation, I'm going to explain, or even delivering a message or talking to somebody. It's very simple. It's not a comeback. It's not a word track. If you tell me no, what I simply do is I take everything, everything that I know about you, the second you say no to me, and I throw myself in your shoes immediately. Hey guys, if you're ready to level up and crush it and kill it, I'm gonna tell you what to do. Put it on the calendar, January 15th, my wife is releasing her YouTube channel, Jacqueline Elliott. My wife is the backbone of our company. She's the CEO of the Elliott Group. She has wrote all the sales training. I have just been the face. She is coming out into the open from how we have a badass marriage to raising our children while we have a nine figure business and killing it to leading our sales team and ultimately just crushing and killing it in life. If you're ready to level up, if you follow me and you're a man, you want to know what she knows. It will make you the baddest ass man that's ever lived. And also, if you're a woman, get your wife on this. If you watch this and you're a lady and you want to crush it and kill it, you want to make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. So men and women, if you're ready for the greatest training that was ever released, the greatest self-development from the greatest CEO that's ever lived, Jacqueline Elliott, January 15th. Be on the lookout. It's going to be game changing. Hmm. I immediately feel the pain, the frustration, the stress, or anything that you're going through, any concern, any uncertainty, any anything that you did not believe in. I, I feel every bit of it immediately. And then I respond to you as if it was me. Hmm. And because I can feel it, my empathy is at a level that's insane and I can automatically close you no matter what. And what I do is that I feel everything that my customer feels. Most cus- most salespeople don't feel anything their customers feel. And that's why when their customers say no, they, they sometimes have a word track that can push them forward or advance the sell forward or they can give them reasons and excuses why they should say yes. But the customer can't see in their eyes that it's the right move. So people do, they say yes for one or two reasons. Number one, logically, what you're saying makes sense. But number two, in my gut, I believe you. So I just want to tell you, anytime someone says anything, I want you guys to immediately put yourself in their shoes. Immediately. And matter of fact, as I'm presenting and talking to somebody about anything, I'm automatically sliding myself in their shoes. And I can see the way that they scratch their nose, the way that they move their hair, the way that they cross their legs. I can see anything. I can start to feel that. And I don't see it. I feel it. Mm. So when I feel it, I can lean in. And that way, when I'm overcoming it, we're like one. That's, that's game right yeah, there. It's really some big game. You know, I do that thinking about when you say that and I never thought about it in that way. Like I try but to now think, you can process it. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, because remember we just talked about teaching. Yeah. So like if you're going to teach someone how to be the greatest student in the or the greatest closer in the world, you're, you're going to need to tell their brain exactly what's happening. Yes. And I learned as a teacher, see, in the beginning, I used to be a showman. So like you could hit me with an objection, I would handle it and when it's done. You'd be like, hey, how'd you do that? And I'm like, I don't even know. Because like you cause <laughs> I like, struggle with that. For yeah, because when you get put under pressure, you automatically come back. Right. Yep. But then I couldn't figure out what I was doing. And then one day I said, dude, I know what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm actually putting myself in their shoes and I feel what they feel. And I'm trying to tell you that like, if you, everybody's broken, but people have different levels of brokenness, but like, I'm one of the most broken motherfuckers in this world. So like, I can feel and see everything, but I want to feel it. Because if I'm real, if I really have a good product that could really help you, I'm doing a disservice, not, not ensuring that you have it. Right. Like, like I'm actually screwing you over yeah. 100%. by not doing this. 100%. Like, because you could accidentally do in business with this guy who's not going to take care of you. Mm-hmm. You could a- accidentally keep struggling with this problem. You get stuck with the utility company who's going to bend you over day over nothing day. Nothing changes. Right. Yeah. So, like, I'm trying to tell you that one of the things that I do is that I put myself in their shoes. Yeah. And that's massive to the belief in the product. If mm. you have that sick belief in your product, it just comes you out. You need that. Like, you, you, you're 90% of the way there. So. I think people lack the understanding that sales is the transfer of emotion. And yes. how could you transfer emotion to someone if you don't even know what they're feeling? That's it. So, take me back. You say you're, uh, you're the most broken person. Mm-hmm. 
what was uh what was young andy like what was high school andy middle school andy who were you then well so like so well number one so my mom left when i was two which mm -hmm. that doesn't matter right because she's a loser right and my dad raised me but my dad's not around my dad's busy working a lot so i've got five brothers and sister so we're gonna call this like the jerry springer show right, <laughs> right. <laughs> no adults i mean like shit happening and like i mean i'm smoking weed in sixth grade dropping acid in seventh grade i mean dude i'm doing what the kids who are doing or what it, it doesn't matter no one's around right like no one's home right like i disappeared in second grade for like four months one time and i was in the back of the neighborhood my second dad didn't grade, my dad's like hey uh where you been i'm like i was in the back of the neighborhood you know <laughs> I, oh i was going to school but i just didn't come home oh. like there was just there was just no dinner t tables i mean re there was no nothing man like, i never did school i never did homework i don't even know how i passed honestly like i'm not even Sure, that's how stupid school is. Like they passed me. Like I didn't ever even did any homework. Hey, you got I barely your GED showed up because the school burned down yeah. or some shit. Yeah, with the tornado has wiped it out. Oh, tornado! But, but I will tell you this: there were some times where I really like went through some shit. And by the way, listen, you know it, it's 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 like you know there's like some big things that really happened that don't bother me as much. There were some little things that happened that really pissed me off. Mm. So people change from fear of em em embarrassment. And I think that's what I went through as a kid is like just being embarrassed. And by the way, a lot of people get embarrassed. But there was one time really that I got really embarrassed. And this was why when I hit sales and I found out I can make money, I went fucking ape shit. Like I went crazy. So I remember one time I went to my dad and it was, I was in the fifth grade or I was in the fifth grade. And I wanted to go to an amusement park. It was $5 to get in. And I told my dad, I was like, hey, dad, you don't want to go. He's like, dude, we ain't got $5. You know, we ain't got $5, Andy. He's like, dude, listen to me. He's so. I went, I would jump the fence every time we'd go. My friends would go to the front line and then I would go around the side and jump the barbed wire fence. And it's just embarrassing. You know what I mean? Go around the side yep. and then jumping mm. the fence and then you're crawling through the fucking mud and you're going around the front. Okay, I had two pairs of pants, two pairs of shirts, rotated them every other day. Okay, unless I stole something from somebody. It's just embarrassing. Man. Didn't you wear that yesterday? You know, it's like, it's like dude, it oh, just yeah. gets old. It gets old. It just gets old. But this was the final straw. A lot of that crap. Dad doesn't have any money. I'm aware we're broke. I completely get it. Dude, we have a house. My dad built a new house, got a divorce. Um, halfway through the end of the build, um, ran out of money. So we never had air conditioner, right? So, like, it was hot as fuck. You know what I'm saying? But it's a new house. So it's like, it's like we weren't in the ghetto, but it's like, is this like, there was always these little pieces missing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And the, the refrigerator was always empty. Yeah. There was never any food. So we would have to go to someone else's house to eat. You know what I'm saying? So it was just it was just kind of a shit show, you know what I mean, for mm -hmm. kids. And there was nobody guiding us or supervising us or leveling us up or teaching us. I mean, it was like, it was truly Jerry Springer show. Like, if you guys ever watch that show, like, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but, but the final straw for me was whenever I was in seventh grade, I wanted to go um, to the lake with my friends. So I live in Oklahoma, and there's, in, in, in Texas, there's this lake called Lake Texoma. It's in between both states. And, dude, this is where all the, the, the good-looking girls were, going to seventh grade. They'd go down to this lake, and I, I needed to be there. You know what I'm saying? There was a yep. chick that I was interested in. She was down there. I needed to go seventh down Seventh grade, way. the testosterone's pumping. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, going through puberty. I need to get down to that lake. Yes, sir. Well, my best friends, they had money. They had cars. They had things. Uh, his older brother was in ninth grade. He had a car. Okay, He was 16 years old, and he had a truck. He said I could ride in the back of his truck down to the lake. And I remember this. His, his little brother, which is my best friend, goes, hey, dude, my mom, all the moms hated me because I never had any money to chip in with anything. So when I was there, it was like I was like a nuisance. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're like, Andy, your dad didn't send you with the packed bags or any money or, you know, any to chip in or, you know, I'm like, dude, I mean, like, I don't have any money. So it's, I felt like I was just a leech, like a third will. And I just want to hang out with my friends. So I'm a kid wanting to hang out with the friends. But the parents make me feel like I'm a, I'm a retard. Hmm. And I know that I don't fit in because my friends got nice clothes and I got shit clothes. I can just tell I'm not supposed to be there. But I'm a good kid, right? Okay. Well, this is where the line draws. My buddy goes, hey, dude, my mom says you got to have 20 bucks um, to come down to the lake house. And, like, you have to have it because she wants everybody to chip in because we're going to be there for four days. Everybody needs to chip in with food. And I said, okay, I, I got 20 bucks. And I'm completely lying. Yeah, okay. I, but I got to go to the lake. Right. Right. But this is where, like, this was the best lesson I've ever been taught. When I think about me needing money today, you may think about all the things that I could think about. But this is what I think about. This is it. This is the ultimate embarrassment, okay? So I, uh, I, I, I drive down there in the back of the truck, 
as soon as we get out to 11 o'clock at night, um, there was two other guys in the back of the truck and obviously the other guys in the front of the cab. We all get out and this guy, Matt, his mom is like, hey, what's up guys? All right, you know the game. Come on, throw the 20 up. You know what I'm saying? And each kid, you know, one of them's like, oh, my dad said give you 50. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, fucker. You're sweating. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, it's You're like, sweating. It, dude, I'm the last kid. And this mom does not like me. And she looks at me, she goes, Andy, did your dad give you 20? And I was like, uh, I was like, yeah. I was like, I think it's in the truck though. And she, I mean, I'm just a kid, dude. I'm seventh grade. Right. And she's like, go get your money. And I was like, um, okay, give me, you know, let me go look. Right. So I go back to the truck. I come back. I said, must've blown out. As soon as I get home, she goes, you're lying. She goes, you don't come in this house. You stay on the fucking porch. You're not coming in this house. Well, we're two hours away from my house, right? We're two hours away. So for a week, it was like five days straight. Literally, I slept out on the deck every night. Listen, she wouldn't let me in the house. Secondly, during the day, she would come and she would feed all the kids sandwiches. She would make them all sandwiches and, and chips. And she said, if any of you let fucking Andy eat any of that food, I swear to God, I'm fucking sending you home. I'm not even playing. She wouldn't give me a sandwich. She wouldn't give me nothing. But what the fuck is wrong listen, with listen, her? Listen, listen. This lady was the antichrist. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Thank God she existed. But exactly. That's she what was I was going to say. No, is she, she was the antichrist you. or she was a godsend? Well, I'm going to tell you this. In that moment, she was the antichrist. And I, yeah. and I envisioned slitting her throat a couple <laughs> times. But I want to tell you something. To a seventh grader. It was the best thing as a kid that I could ever go through. Mm. Number one, because my friends got very uncomfortable that week around me. They didn't know how to operate or act. And and they followed her rules, which it showed me the, the fucking loyalty my friends had hmm. to, to me. Yep. Right? So that was one. Two was money has a lot to do with fucking where you go. Facts. And, and it pissed me off that that had to be that. And that I was a good kid with a good heart, had nothing to do with anything. Hmm. But I did what they said. I hung out. You know what I mean? I was, I was hanging out with that chick all week, which I was cool. I was fucking starving, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? looking lean. Hey, yeah, I stole, some shit, at, hey, I stole <laughs> some shit at the gas station, yeah. right? I did steal some shit at the gas station, but I had to figure it out. Right. But on the way home, when I got home, I remember, I told, I told my dad, um, he goes, hey, Jeff, fun at the lake? I said, yeah. But I said, dad, one day I'm going to find my way out. I said, I swear to God, man, I'm going to find my way out. And I just, I knew one day it was going to come. So let's fast forward all the way through school. No one's invested in me, barely graduate high school. Finally, the second I graduate, right? I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm ready to roll. I, I did tornado work because um, the tornadoes smoked our school. Yeah. So, so I did construction for one month and I picked up a bunch of, you know, like construction shit. Like you had to pick up bricks all day long and clean mm -hmm. up tornado debris. Serve pro. Dude, <laughs> screw that shit, man. I was like, dude, listen, dude, this isn't me. I can't be doing this. I'm, I don't even care about the money, dude. This is bullshit. I got fiberglass all in my body. You know, I'm like, dude, this isn't what I want to do. My my bro my best friend's older brother goes, dude, have you ever thought about selling cars? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, the last thing I am is a sales person. He goes, dude, you ought to sell cars. This day my life changed forever. Like this is this is the key. Yep. And he goes, he goes, you can make five grand a month selling cars. I go, no ways, dude. I've never I've never held more than five dollars in my hand at a time. Mm. I've never had five dollars until I was 18 years old in my hand at one time, physically, five thousand. Like the guys on the news make $5,000, I'm thinking. Right. Those guys are Can't rich. People are driving Ferraris. Right. Like, what do you mean $5,000? Did you say, say thousands? Right. I'm like, no, I'm like, impossible. He goes, why don't you come test it out with me? Now, his dad had died, um, so he had some clothes that were left over. Back then, he had wear a suit, tie, you know, yeah. all that shit. Well, I'm like 185 pounds. His dad was like 140 so, like, I put his stuff on, dude. You think I'm wearing tight clothes like now? Like Chris Farley? Like, dude, <laughs> bro, like, it was retarded, man. Yeah. But I put these clothes on, and literally, this is the best thing that ever happened. We, we drive to work. It's 8 a.m. in the morning. He goes, I'm going to have a sales meeting with the sales guys. I need you to go outside, and if somebody pulls up, tell them when we're meeting. We'll yeah. be out there in a minute. And literally, this old man pulls up. Story goes. He says, I want to drive that car. So I go get the keys, and I go drive it with him. And I just made a friend with him, man. I, I was like, oh, you're my, my grandpa. I'm building a rapport. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just trying to be nice to him. I don't want to lose my job first day of work. Mm. Come back in. Manager goes, oh, we need somebody to go help you because you don't know what you're doing. So I need somebody else to help you. So another salesman comes out and goes, hey, sir, how you doing? You know, I'm going to help him out. He's his first day. And he goes, hey, if I talk to anybody else, I'm leaving. I only want to talk to that kid. So I'm like, fuck, you know, like what's going on? 
So this guy liked me a lot. And my manager goes, dude, he likes you, man. So uh, I'm just going to write some numbers down on a piece of paper. And uh, you go ask him which option he wants to do. And let's see how, how it goes. So anyways, I, I remember I, he asked me to get, get a credit app. And the guy filled it out. And I gave it back to my manager. And my manager goes, man, this guy's gold. I remember that like it was yesterday. You remember all these little things. Mm. And then he gave me a piece of paper back. And he goes, go ask the guy if he wants to do option A or option B. Like it was that simple. Yep. And just have him sign the line. And I was like, okay. So I go back in there and the guy looks at me, he goes, he goes, what's the interest rate? And I said, the interstate? <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. Yeah, like, I, remember. I remember like yeah. it was yesterday. I'm still sitting in the office. I'm an idiot. No and idea. And he's like, all right. He's like, he just signed. <laughs> and I was like, thank Damn. you. Well, no, I'm like, thank you. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> right. There's no bam. There's no, I don't even know what's going on. It, it's just, I'm a retard. It's my first day of work. And I go bring it back to my manager and, and he looks at the paper and he's like, are you kidding me? He goes, get this guy in finance now. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. So they race him back to the finance office. He's like, go get this truck cleaned up in the back. So I go get the truck cleaned up in the back. The manager comes out, walks around the car when the guy gets in sign his papers. And then he pages me in the tower. Andy Elliott sales tower. And I'm like, I walk in there. He's like, do you know how much money you just made? And I was like, dude, if I just made five bucks to go get a Subway sandwich, I'm like, I'm like so happy. I'm starving, dude. Hmm. And he's like, you just made $1,700. And this is in 1999, right? When that and I'm met, like, $1,700 I'm like, man, 1700 I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, you just made 1700 He's like, the crazy thing is it's the last day of the month. So you're going to get paid 1700 tomorrow, right? Because today's the last day of the month. Yeah, this is the end of the month. Yeah, the end of the month. Yeah. He goes, and also, we give $500 cash to the top gross of every month. And you just hit the top gross spiff, which means tomorrow morning in the meeting, you're going to get 500 cash. I'm like, no fucking way. Yeah, I'm like, fuck I'm up. like, what? The next morning, they hand me a $1,700 check, check 500 cash. And I was like, all right, I'm dusting every motherfucker in here. Yeah. Dude, from that point, <laughs> my veins flowed differently. The blood moved in my body. My eyes changed colors. Dude, I went from being a piece of shit to growing up really fast. And that year I made like 120 grand. And then wow. um, I think I made 220 or 240 my next year. And then I made 500 grand by the time I was 20. And I'm trying to tell you guys that none of that was supposed to happen, but I found sales. And mm -hmm. thank God that somebody hired me when I was absolutely not qualified to work in a sales position, which is why today as a training company, I believe, you know, obviously salespeople are, bo are made, not born, but, but believe in us telling the world that dude, like, you have no idea what is out there if you'll get in sales. If somebody gets in solar sales, like, like, and they join your company, like, oh my God. Like, dude, like, they can make a million in a year mm -hmm. with no degree, being a good person, sleeping at night like a baby, just learning how to help people. We had a teacher. Yes. Leave the school, come sell for us. He made 1.2 first year. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. When I see that, though, I'm just like, I just want to just, like, like, yell at people and, like, dude, like, Dude, like quit your job. Yeah. Like quit your up. job. Like, like learn the skill. Like practice it. Like believe in yourself. Like, dude, I had no confidence. I stuttered. I didn't have what it took. But dude, thank God I got that first, you know, like thank God my manager even let me do that. Show yeah. up. Yep. Right? Which sometimes I want to tell you this. I see this in the world that people people are trying to recruit people who are really talented from other jobs for money that'll leave one job to go to the next and then eventually they'll leave you and then go to somewhere else. Dude, these guys that are younger, that are broken, I always learned that what, what people don't have when they're young, they want it as an adult. Mm. And if you have a lot of money as a kid, when you get older, you don't really want it because you've had it your whole life. You don't value it. Right. You expect it, but you don't want it. But when you're fucking broke, dude, you don't want to be broke no more. You're sick of it. And you'll do anything and whatever it takes. You'll work unlimited amount of hours and you'll and you'll you'll do whatever until you can master it. You just answered a question I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you why do you think people who take the struggle bus go so far? But I think you just summed it up with that. Yeah, because dude, they're refined. Yeah. Right. They're refined by the fire, man. Like, dude, what, what you, you had to go through all that to get you ready for what you're going to go through next, man. Dude, like being disappointed was something that I was my whole life. Like somebody saying no to me on the lot was nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's like, yeah. dude, you think this is bad? I'm like, this is nothing, dude. It gets you excited almost. Yeah, I'm like, dude, she's going to say, yeah, 10 minutes from now. Who cares? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. I no mean, means like, not yet. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even matter, man. Yeah. And I could sell anybody when I was a kid, man. I'll tell you a quick 30-second story. But when I was 19 years old, 
I'm out here. There was his Nissan Xterras. They released them to the market, right? I remember. Brand new, yeah. And in the back seat, they had to call it the stadium seating, which means the, the back seat sat higher than the front seat. And I was talking to this lady, and I go, ma'am, this right here, this Nissan Xterra, it's got stadium seating, which means the back seat sit higher than the front so you can see over them. So you see how you're pregnant, right? How you're going to have a baby. Like, your baby will be able to see over the front. She goes, I'm not fucking pregnant. Shut up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like I'm, and I told her, so I'm she so. She still drives Honda. No, no, listen, day. listen. No, no, listen. I, I sold her. Listen. No. Yes, listen, listen. It gets more, but just shows you how rejection, you can work through it, okay? And in face to face sales, you can get through anything, okay? But I'm, t- I'm trying to tell you, that, and I go, oh, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I'm a loser. I remember doing this. I put my head on my head like this, and I go, I am a loser. I'm a freaking loser. I'm so stupid. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I said, listen, let's just do this. Let's take it for a test drive. <laughs> let's go down the road and back, and let's just see what you think about oh, it, okay? I God. said, I won't say a word. She gets in the car. She starts it, right? And she goes, it's out of gas because the needle was underneath the E. Yeah. And I said, ma'am, this thing's got a 20-mile backup tank on it. Okay, mm. like we can, we got lots of room here. Okay, we got lots of like, we're good. 1999, no cell phone, no pager, no nothing. We're in Oklahoma, it's 120 degrees outside. We drive right. three miles down the highway <laughs> and we are on the side of the road running out of gas. I have to walk back with her oh to God. the dealership and she is pissed. And when I got back to the lot, I said, Well, obviously it drove great. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make sure that we do a full tank of gas. Maybe two, okay? <laughs> I know that you like the car because you still wouldn't be here right now if you didn't, yeah. okay? Why don't we go inside and see what kind of manager special I can get for us for the time that we put together with us? And she says, it better be good. And, dude, I went in there and sold her. And That's and And great. I'm just telling you, like, since that time, I was like, people are like, oh, this lady's stupid. I'm like, dude, you guys are dumb. Give me the paper. Where's the customer? Yeah. I'm like, you guys are stupid. I'm like, I'm just so delusional belief that everybody's going to take what I want. And by the way, I was an amateur, okay? Like, she should have left. Yep. But my point 100%. being proved that, like, disappointment, rejection, mistakes, like, just keep working through them. Like, yeah, I think delusion. so many people would have said, ma'am, I'm sorry, let me go get someone else. I was like, no, man, I'm sorry. Let's go get in the car and drive it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Ignorance from the that. beginning of sales is the yes. best thing you could. We, we tell all our guys, like, stay stupid. Don't. Stop trying to learn everything about solar. Just fucking knock doors. I do want to know everything. how on good brand it was yeah. that you found out she was just a little hefty and you made her go for a walk. That's <laughs> <laughs> so Andy Elliott. Dude, it was crazy, man. <laughs> so, yeah. so I, uh, n- not the same story, but I had a similar story. I was 19 when I got in a door to door. Uh huh. And, uh, dude, when I got in, the guy was just like, this is how many doors you need to knock on. And this is what you need to do. And it was the pure ignorance of just like, this guy told me I can make this much amount of money yeah. if I do this. Yeah. And that's it. There was no other decision. Like, I wanted to make the money, boom, and I made the money. And he know? told you how it worked. Exactly. Yep. And it just fucking happened. And you believed him. Dude. Correct. That same thing right there, I literally, Alex Smith, right, owns a solar company, Spartan Solar. Yep, I know. Right, did y'all see him here? He's here right now. Oh, oh. I didn't even I know, know. Yeah, but yeah, I know yeah, yeah, but he's here. He's a great guy. Yep. And literally, he's got a guy, they, they told this guy that we close 7 out of 10. Now, the good ones close 10 out of 10. Yep. But, but they're just bullshitting this guy, right, clearly. But they say, look, if you're good, right, you'll set 7 out of 10. But if you're great, you'll set 10 out of 10. And this setter, his very first day on the job, set every 10 people that he ran into, he set 7 appointments with. He doesn't know better here. And once he found out that that wasn't the truth, he went to setting like 1 out of every 20. It's like, dude, like your brain, like once it once it attaches itself to something, it, it's dangerous. So, like, once you attach yourself to, like, big stuff, like, you're dangerous. But once you also attach yourself to limiting beliefs, like, you're screwed. Yeah. And so I just wanted to tell you that, like, you, you didn't know any better. I right. didn't know any better. I, I thought every c- customer after that deal was going to be a $1,700 commission. Yeah. I thought every customer That's was going to be That's the one problem with your story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you get that, you're like, this shit is easy. Well, then the next <laughs> three people slammed the door and they nice. rolled out. You know what I mean? But I didn't know any better, man. Yeah. But that's why I had to learn how to shake a hand. I had to learn how to say hi to people. I had to learn how to look at people in the eyes. You know, how to learn to freaking be polite. How to learn to listen. You know, like all these things, man. But most people just stop self-developing. It's the truth. But but the solar industry, I think, dude, if, you know, and I know we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but the solar industry in the next couple of years are going to be dangerous because there's a lot of changes that are going on. And you're going to have to change 
to be able to sell solar. Mm. You're I can already see now all the real companies are surviving, and the other, the fucking fly they're getting night dismantled. companies are getting destroyed. They're all blood money yeah. companies taking yeah. advantage of the situation. Yeah, when it was easy, everybody out. made some money, but now those yeah. guys are all out of business. You yeah. know what I mean? It was easy, and now when it, and by the way, it still is easy, but you have to self develop. You have to do it right. You have to have integrity. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to care about your customers. Yeah. Like there's, there's some things that have to happen, but I'm just telling you, man, you guys are gonna, you guys are in the perfect timing, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm watching a lot of big solar companies really dismantle right now, and they're falling apart. And it's usually just because of leadership, and the leadership sucks, and the leaderships are actually whining and complaining about changes when change has always been a part of every industry. Right. And since the even the leaders are whining, now the people are whining, people are quitting. Dude, it's just Fish like the solar the changes down. by the day, dude. With with the with because it's government controlled solar. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. All the state tax rates, mm -hmm. federal. So it changes like crazy. And on that note, I uh, so I started when I was nineteen. I'm twenty four now. Yeah, been in solar for five years. We've done over one hundred fifty million. My father has been in car sales for twenty four years. My father oh, was in ass. car sales. That's badass. Well. <laughs> so my father was in car sales for twenty four years, my whole life. Yeah. And uh, two years ago, he quit and started selling solar with me too, which is crazy. Dude, that's now badass. Now I'm his manager, but uh. No, but your dad's happy as hell. Oh, my God. He made he triple is. the money his first year ever. Yeah, then your dad's ever... happy as hell, oh man. And your dad's a thick-skinned son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I, I don't even need to meet him, and I know. And especially if he's a New Yorker, yeah. and he was selling cars. He actually looks he looks a little bit like Andy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I like him already. <laughs> you know, is he 50? He's 59. He's about yeah. to be 60. And, yeah, so if your dad's... And he's out knocking on doors Yeah, yeah. every we'll be, fucking day. Yeah, well, because your dad controls his own money, and your dad also, and I'm just going to say this, the automotive industry is an amazing uh, industry to work in because it's the transportation space. Yep. Everybody fucking needs a car. Mm. Like you're selling something that 100% of the world has to have. Like, like it's, it's just amazing. But your father, toward the end of his career, probably had to work with a bunch of pansies and a bunch of weak asses and a bunch of people that didn't know how to lead. It was a terrible... It was the lack of leadership. Every dealership. time I talked to him, is I, they I treated you. him like shit, and he was like a gold Cadillac-ranked salesman or whatever they have. Yeah, but the point is, is that it, it's a bunch of entitled, weak leaders, mm. okay? And all they want you to do is kiss their ass. Mm -hmm. When their exactly. job is... They're, they're barstool warriors, and back in the day, which means they're sitting on their ass all day, you know, like a fish waiting for something to bite. In the old days, leaders were hunters. They were on the front line hunting with their men, okay? And that's why that's why the, the, the culture was so great in all the automotive industries because everybody stayed close together. But now it's not that way, dude. Now you got a bunch of people, as soon, as soon as they get a manager title, they go sit behind their desk and they think it's all about them. And they're Can't freaking, lead from behind. They're freaking weak, yep. okay? It's very common today. Yes. Can't lead very, from behind. Very fucking common. I still post, you know, I took the management role and I, I, I have to perform. If I can't that go means out you and gotta, sell, you got to work twice as hard, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. When I got to manage, yeah. my job got ten times harder. Yeah, for half the money. More. Yeah. Yeah. First thing, <laughs> it is. especially in the beginning. Well, exactly. Oh, it's normal that I'm making less at the, in the management. <laughs> yes. Thank God. Well, promotion is a demotion. <laughs> okay. I always tell people, mm. I'm like, dude, when you get promoted, you automatically get half your pay cut, mm. because it's when you get paid. I'm just hypothetically speaking, ten or twenty percent or whatever on your own. But then you go from to making one or two percent off an entire team. Well, now it's not about you anymore. Mm. Okay, I know you know how to get up, get out of bed, and go work. Okay, I know you know how to put the effort in. Okay, I'm not asking anybody to work for me. I know how to work, but I got to get people now to work, and a lot of people don't know how to do that, and that's the reason why you have to be a really good leader. Mm. So you know, and you got to know how to hire, and you got to know how to inspire your team. You got to be a spirit, and you got to be alive, and that's why like titles mean nothing. That's why I was telling you, being the leader and being the mentor has nothing to do with money. Yep. And that's why all these people are on social media now is because they're actually looking for someone to look up to and it's not the boss in their company. Back in the old days, dude, mm -hmm. who we looked up to was our boss. Our boss was who we wanted to that's be. That's all you had access to. Yeah, dude. When I was 18 years old, dude, I wanted to be my boss. Like I wanted to walk. Look, he wore Johnson and Murphy's. So did I. He wore these slacks. So did I. He wore these colorful ties. So did I. He wore a white shirt every day to work. So did I. Mm. He slicked his hair back. So did I. I did whatever he did. Whatever he did. He had a black backpack. So did I. Whatever he had, I had. And then when I got into leadership, all my guys, I carried a jug of water to work every day. So did they. I wore shorts, short ones. So did they. Whatever I wore, so did they. I right. went to Converse and got out of dress shoes. So did they. That was the rule, man, that our team wanted to be the leader. So as soon as I changed, they changed. But today... That doesn't exist. 
Well, here it does. Everyone in here has got yeah, tight no, pants. Yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah. Yes, we all have tight pants here. <laughs> Including That's myself. Yes, so like you guys, we're all family. It's got to yeah. be fixed. Yeah. It's a lot of pansies out there who think that management means that people work for you when in reality, it's supposed to mean that you work for all of yeah, them. Yeah, all, all management means is that you can get fired by your team any day now. Yeah, that's yeah, how Pat says. Because they'll leave. Yeah. 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 yeah, like, dude, don't don't forget, like, you can fire your people, but they can fire you, too. Yeah. yeah, like, and again, like, Pat says that, but, like, that's the truth, man. And, dude, anyways, it, just a lot of things are going wrong, but that's why I like doing these podcasts. That's why I like whenever people watch stuff like this. Our goal is just like you guys made a decision to try to go help people change their life. You guys aren't interested in just making money. You do want to make money because you want to take good care of your families and you want to have a nice lifestyle, Right. And obviously, like, you need money to have a good life. You need money to be generous to people. You need mm. money to give. Like, look, if I don't make any money, I can't give to anyone. I can't be generous to anybody. You know, I always I always ask people, like, dude, what do you do with your money? Like, are you good at saving? Are you good at spending? Are you good at shopping? You know, like, 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 are you are you good at tithing? Are you are you good at giving? Like, well, like, what are you good at, right? Like, and a lot of people they just spend everything that they make and they're just pieces of shit. Mm. You well, know money I mean? makes you more of what you are. If you're a generous yeah. person, you start to give more. Yeah. If you're a dickhead already, now you're just more of a dickhead. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what we've done with this podcast too, just touch on it. We donate Blade Legs. So all the money we've ever made from this podcast and uh -huh. probably way more than that, yeah. we've donated Blade Legs to people who, who can't get... Uh, how, uh, how do you find the, the customers? Or how do you find the people to help? I love all you on talk Instagram. That's all you. All on Instagram. Yeah. We find them actually so... I became very good friends with this gentleman last How'd you lose your leg? motorcycle accident. Oh, okay. Uh, August 8th, 2020. I was riding at night. So three years ago? Yep. Yep. Ripped it right off. Uh, lucky for me, I didn't die. <laughs> yeah. I was in the hospital 15 days. When you ripped it up. off, were you awake? Oh, yeah. Were you it conscious? Was, it was bad. My brother was behind me. He said that I, so I hit this rock wall. The front end of my bike went down, launched me up in the air. I did like five front flips and I hit power lines. Came back down, hit the ground, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I was perfectly fine. I went like this. I was like, oh, shit, I'm good. Went to stand up. My foot was over here. So I hit the ground. I'm like, all right, I know what to do because, well, actually, my brother knew what to do because my uncle had lost his leg on a motorcycle accident. So he runs up to me, rips my belt off of me, tourniquets my leg. Ambulance is there in seven minutes. I'm in a helicopter in 30 minutes. I'm at Westchester Medical under an hour. God was there. And uh, it was a terrible thing, but it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Because I woke up and I realized that you need to have urgency in this world because you can be gone like this. Yeah. Death is an uncontrollable, man. I mean, you don't get to decide when it's your time. I started living my life after well, God, that day. Well, God, facts. And God would have killed you or would have made it the last day had he not had big plans for you after it. I believe Sometimes that. Sometimes he just needs to get your attention, man. You know, like some of the biggest things that have happened to me in my life has been when the biggest setbacks hit. And I always say, like, all right, dude, like, he's trying to get my attention. It's like, and he probably tried to get your attention a little bit before that, and you were just being an idiot. So he's like, all right, I'm going to tear his leg off. Yep. <laughs> no, really you have, you have no <laughs> idea. Yeah. yeah. You, it, you have no idea how much <laughs> that, like, that was my life. Before this motorcycle accident, I was doing nothing. Nothing. Nothing special. I wasn't helping anyone. I wasn't making money. I wasn't living a fulfilling life. Within the last two You're years, just I have a uh, fiance. We're getting married tomorrow. I was going to see if you can come and do it. I found out you're ordained. That's pretty cool. Hey. <laughs> uh, I have a baby girl. She's six months old. I, I have a sales team that I work for. And I've been able to uh, have this charitable venture. You have your whole life. Yeah. yeah it it happy. gave me meaning. Yeah, and so what I want to do for other people, and it's all through gratitude, mm -hmm. right? Because I really learned to appreciate everything that I almost lost. Yeah. And people have a hard time appreciating things until it's just about taken away from you. So that's the message I try to push, especially with this podcast, is learn to appreciate what you got because you might not have it. That's right. How, so how do people uh, donate? Oh, yeah. So we have. Uh, so like if I, somebody's like, hey, how do I help? Uh, you could go to my Instagram, uh -huh. uh, Anthony Capaletti, and you'll see there's a donation link for Less Leg, More Heart. Okay. That's the charitable organization I've been working with. That's but cool. again, just to go back to where we started this conversation, I became friends with a gentleman who was also an amputee who made uh, blade legs, right? So the blade leg is what you run on. It doesn't have a foot on it. It's a pad. Because he started making blade legs that were affordable that he could sell direct to consumer. Because if you're an amputee like myself and you enjoyed running, mm -hmm. that's not an option anymore. Right. Unless you want to be an Olympic level athlete, that's out of the question. So he's found that issue, said, I'm going to solve that by making uh, affordable blade legs. We got hooked up and then 
he started sending people my way. I got hooked up with the uh, charitable organization. We started purchasing blade legs and get, handing them out. That's crazy. Do you do you have a nerve? No nerve damage. Pain. Anything? No, I'm very lucky. I, I don't That's have what's any curious. weird. Like if you shit. touch it, like if you do that to the leg, that just like no. shock you or anything. No, no, no. A lot of people have a lot of issues, but I uh, yeah, I got lucky. Yeah, I don't have any of those. I mean, if I pr try to move my foot, yeah, it feels like it's there again. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah. But I try not to do that because it's really fucking weird. Yeah. yeah but also, what's crazy is his fucking uncle lost the same leg in no, a motorcycle other accident. Leg. Oh, yeah, okay. Above the knee. Same. Well, whatever. His fucking leg in a motorcycle accident. And my brother. I think it makes you cool with one leg. Yeah. It's oh, dude, amputee madness. We talk about this all the time. When you lose a leg or you lose an arm, whatever, you become just a sick, crazy motherfucker. The people like, we've met. You're just yeah. Crazy. The yeah. best people to be around. Well, because in order for that to happen, number one, it's a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then number two, it's a lot of trauma, okay? And trauma changes people. Yep. My wife always says, don't wait for something bad to happen before you live your best life. Yeah. Mm. And I think a lot of people, they or before you wake up even, um, they have three kids and they don't spend time with their kids until one of them dies. And then you're like- It's too late. Yeah. Well, but then you're, 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 you're like, I need to spend time with these other two, but you're so broken from the one you lost, you can't even give anything to the two. Mm. I just tell everybody, just wake up, man. Wake up. One day, I tell my team every day, somebody has to die. Somebody has to die. Like, everybody understands this. We're all here in this room now, right? There's a hundred of us. Look at us. But somebody's got to die. Like, you guys all know, like, somebody one day is not going to show up. Yes. Mm. Like, let's all get strong. Let's all get ready. So when that happens, we're ready. Because it's going to happen. Like, it's going to happen. Like, I tell my kids, like, it's one of us has to die at some point. Mm. And we'll be in heaven together for, for you know, all together Absolutely. at some point. But, like, but like, let's just be strong. Let's wake up. Let's not be retarded. Let's not fight about stupid shit. Mm. You know? See, you, know? you got to, it's a bigger picture thought process that you really need to take oh, yeah. on. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what it gave it me. Because it's real. Yeah. That's what this gave me. Yeah. It's a bigger picture. Yeah. I don't care about none of the little shit no more. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you let the small shit roll downhill because, I mean, fuck, dude, I just got my leg ripped off. I mean, that ain't nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Listen, a pair of socks last me two days now. <laughs> yeah. All right? Yeah. Yeah. This is easy. No, I love that. I always, uh, my, my wife, I'll go with her to get a pedicure because I showed you guys. I only got four toes on my right You foot. get a discount. <laughs> yeah. Me I'm too. Like, I'm like, hey, can I get some kind of discount here? <laughs> right? You're not going to hit me full price, right? Because, oh, I mean, shit. I'm like, I'm only got nine toes, right? <laughs> And, you know, and, and nobody can tell that I'm missing my pinky toe, right? Because it got cut off by a lawnmower when I was young. And a lot of people don't know that. I can I walk around barefoot every day. But the way your foot's it's shaped, hard it to doesn't, see. you can't yeah, and tell. People don't notice it because yeah. it's my pinky toe, yeah. right? But, like, it's just it's just funny. And, I, they, you know, obviously, I love telling stories when I was younger. People say, oh, my God, what happened? I was like, dude, I was riding a bike, you know, and it got stuck in the chain. And I would, you know, there's always a cool story. So, yeah, you know. All right, we want to have some fun with you. We know, we want to respect your time. All right, and we let's got roll. a couple minutes, so we're gonna have some uh, uh, some different style questions. Maybe shit you've never whatever been asked you got. For. Let's do All it. Right. So first one I have for you, we did this uh, uh, on a podcast not that long ago. You ever heard of the game Fuck Mary Kill? No. Okay. Really? Fuck. It, it's, Dude, we're not. I, we're I not gonna play very many games. Do that game, but it's like Fuck Mary Kill. You give three people. Who would you marry? Who would usually you kill, three hot girls? And who would you have sex with? Right. That's like the game, the high school game. Okay. We have our version, business, bankrupt, and bubble bath. Who would you go into business with? Who would you bankrupt? And who would you take a bubble bath with? Okay? So you're a sales guy. You're the sales trainer. You're the king of them. Yeah. I'm going to give you three names, and you got to tell me which one okay. is going to go in which category. So we got Jordan Belfort. We got Grant Cardone. And we got Patrick by David. Business, bankrupt, and bubble bath. Well, I mean, obviously, because it's all hypothetical here, right? Correct. I would definitely say, you know, Patrick in the bubble bath. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, now you can't do business with them. They can only go in one. Oh, yeah, fuck. I guess I'd take Belford because I would probably bankrupt Cardone. Mm. Ah. Hey, I love him. It's no big deal. Yeah. Oh, he'd come back in two weeks. Well, my point is, <laughs> but if I had to choose, like, I mean, remember, this is a fixed game. Correct. <laughs> like, Correct. there's no third answer and there's no third op or fourth answer or fourth option. Correct. So I think I'd choose Belfort in the bubble, okay. Patrick in business. And then I'd bankrupt for sure. Got um, it. Cardone. Got it. Okay. Yeah, we've already smashed him out of the sales space. I mean, but but my point is, is that's yep. what I would do. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I mean, Bel Belfort's old school. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So my my sales director, Jill Sullen, me and we have two sales directors for our company. 
He grew up selling door-to-door frozen meat at 19 years old in Albany, New York with Jordan Belfort. Oh, wow. They used to know each other well. And yeah. actually, Jordan, Be- funny story, Jordan <laughs> Belfort and Jill, that's the, my sales director's name, were best friends, or sorry, they were the two best guys in the company. Uh-huh. And Jordan Belfort was trying to beat Jill, so he took his truck and he drove down his street where he used to always sell to his clients. And he's like, listen, Jill died. We got to sell out the rest of his truck. All the dono- donations are going to his funeral. <laughs> oh, wow. And sold out fucking Jill's truck. <laughs> and then they got in this big fight. And then Jill and- goes to back to his customer yeah. and they're like, oh my God, Jill. We thought, we thought you, you were dead. Yeah, but <laughs> that's how I found meat. out. Yeah. <laughs> they go way guy. back. But that's the old school hustles. Yeah. That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. It was great, though. But back in the day, though, that's how you won. Yeah. All right. So we got some rapid fire questions. So uh, give us 10 seconds on how to get an eight pack. Um, Eat clean food. It's very simple. If you eat rice and bison and turkey and fish or chicken or steak every day, you don't eat after seven. If you do that for 120 days and you work out five days a week for an hour, you'll have an eight pack. Bam. Boom. That was done. Easy. Go ahead. Uh, the story you told us was you working at a Nissan dealership. Nissan or Toyota? Neither. Mm. Yeah. You got to pick one. You got to pick one. I, would, I mean, I would do Toyota, I guess. Better all right. Myself, but they all suck. Lambo, Lambo or Ferrari? Ferrari. Um, I like Ferrari, but my wife drives a Lambo. Mm. Okay. If you had to give up one for a year, just for the year, work or working out? Work. Mm. I choose health over money all day. I did not. I, I was not expecting that. that. I love that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Because, dude, if I didn't fucking work out, I'd be fucking, you guys. Lost. Would, I'd be fucking killing people. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Uh, dream mentor. If you could be mentored by one person in the history of time, who would it be? One person in the history of time. Man. That's heavy. Well, I get mentored a lot by certain people now that I once wanted to. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. like Brad Lee's like my brother. Like yep. I like getting mentored by Brad, but I'm with Brad all the time. I do everything with Brad. So I would say that would be the guy because me and him do all of our business together, right? Got it. But like if it was like I'm already doing that, you know, but like so who else would it be? Um, then I would say I would say – Probably Patrick Bet David, dude. Yeah, I, mean, I had a feeling. Yeah, like dude, he, same he's, here. He's just a guy, man. I'm trying to base my life around him. Yeah, he's just a fucking <laughs> guy, man. I mean, everything that he says fucking makes me want to punch somebody in the face. <laughs> so, so he's amazing. I fucking love it. When's the last time you punched somebody in the face? I mean, I just I say that hypothetically. <laughs> like, all right, me... will you punch Zach in the face for Live. the camera? Yes. No. You said <laughs> yes first. <laughs> yes. You got to be by your word, man. But you can. No. God. <laughs> Right. Gonna no, no. Um, if you had to give it all up and uh, start in one industry today, what industry would it be today in today's world, today's economy? Well, if I had like if I had to work for someone else. Yeah. If you had to get rid of your coaching, go back to one industry, what I'd industry would you sell? I told you. I knew it. Knew That's that. what I thought, too. Yeah, um, I'd get rich selling solar. We touched on and this I'd a little an bit. Army. And then what? I'd build an build army. army. Oh, build an army. That's That's what what we're go doing. to the army. Said, yeah, yeah, build an army. Uh, you, we touched on this a little bit, but fatherly advice for a new father. Um. You, dude, they're going to grow up super fast. So if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. When you bring your kid home, you're like, I'm going to do all this stuff. Just make sure you keep your word and keep your promise. Yeah. Because, dude, my kid's 13. He's going to be driving in four years, three years. I mean, just too fast. Crazy how fast. Um, Tony, and then if you want to finish it out. Oh, yeah, I'm getting married. You want to come to New York tomorrow? Make it happen? Come on, brother. I'll do it on FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. I couldn't I do that do. to my pastor. I got I a strong relationship with him. But I, but I appreciate do. that. Yes. I know you would. I'll give him some motivation. I'll zoom advice. you in. Yes. You can watch. <laughs> All right. So we, we always cap it with this. Um, we talked about a lot of things today, and you have a lot of great messages. But if you only had one, at the end of the day, one message you could speak to the world, what would it be? It would probably be that I see everybody in the world chasing something. And then what they do is they end up leaving what's most important to them because they're chasing what they don't have. Mm. And what they don't know is they, they can own it all. And, I, and I've said this, you, your job in your life is to call your own shots and to own your own life. And most people, they chase. And the chase game is the fastest way to lose your entire identity. So I would say this, if I have someone that I care about, let's say like I'm married, okay? And I don't have any kids yet, or I've got somebody I care about. Listen, as you go to go on this journey, you better take them with you you better have this like life with them as you go to this new thing that you want. Because if you don't, when you get this, you'll look back and this won't be here no more. And then this person that you want to do this life with, you'll get here and you don't have it. And dude, like, 
just bring the people with you that you love the most and you care about. And I don't mean your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. Okay. I mean, like if you're with a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you want to be with forever, or you have children, you need to bring them with you on the journey. Okay. My kids fly everywhere with me around the world. They, they have, you know, they have, they homeschool. I create my own life with them. Uh, it's very expensive. costs a lot of money. People say, you know, doesn't that cost a lot? We're done this. Hey, dude, listen to me. You know what it fucking costs for me not to be there as their dad? You know what that costs? I mean, wake the fuck up, dude. Like when everything doesn't have to equate to money. Your goal in the end of your life is to, is to be fulfilled and to be happy and to have no regrets. Mm. So the cool thing is, is that 99% of the people are going to go on the four lane highway that everybody else is on, which means they're going to go on the chase game. Here's the deal. There are no limits and this universe will give you whatever you want. But if you have some people in your life that you love and that you care about, you need to take them with you. You need to motivate them and you need to bring them with you as you go get this. And that way you can all take over the world together. Mm -hmm. They should be there celebrating with you when you get it. Yep. And then you have it all. And also one last thing, take fucking care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to fucking take care of other people. It physically can't happen. So if you want a great mindset, you want to kill it in business, take care of yourself and, and bring your family with you. I can't tell you how much that hits home with me. My, I just found out my daughter's, she's got a cold, but I'm away from her. She's six months old. I texted my fiance this morning and said, I'm going to make more money. So when I leave, you come with me every time. Yeah, bring her with you, dude. I texted and, her that this and listen, morning. And my wife, in the beginning, she was like, no, that's too much. That's too much. And I told her, I go, listen to me. Dude, we're always going to find reasons why it's too expensive. We're always going to find reasons why we shouldn't do this. Let's just start doing it. And fine, we started pulling the trigger. And instead of a, you know, a, a $2,500 trip, it went to a $12,000 trip. But do you know what? Having them there with me, dude, I made that $12,000 back like that. Mm. Dude, 12000 bucks ain't nothing to make. Like, come on, man. Like, have the abundance mindset. What the fuck are we teaching them? You know? I mean, so like... I would just say, if you really want to have an amazing life, take the people that you care about with you. It's going to cost you a lot, but the fact that they're with you and the fact that you're bringing them with you, it's like having a team. Like, you're not going to let them down, man. And when you show up, people see you differently. They're like, dude, you got your kids with you? You're like, yeah. And I think it's that's common, too. Bloodline. People think it's like an or game. You could either have this or this. That's a fact. It's that's so called one-dimensional. Yeah. So you guys need to make sure you do it right. That way, all the people that you lead do it right. And then also you're bringing a message out to the world. They'll, they'll do it right. The people that resonate with you guys. And then you guys are the industry leaders and you'll change a lot of lives. Beautiful. For the people who don't know you, we'll finish out with where can they find you? Uh, just go to Instagram, official Andy Elliott. It's easy. Just they'll official. Take you everywhere else. Andy Elliott. Boom. And if you go there, you watch a couple videos, you'll want to punch someone in the face. <laughs> hey, also go to YouTube, man. YouTube's been blown up. We just, we, we started our YouTube channel. We just hit 500,000 subscribers. Um, so, Holy so that's, shit. you know, like a YouTube channel is like one of those things that takes a minute to get built. Yep, um, but we we're, uh, we're getting a lot of traffic now on it. It's really blown up and we drop a lot of free uh, sales training. It's just, it's just, if you want to see a lot of about, free value, yeah, it's just free value. Like just go check it out and it's free. So, Andy, thank you for bringing us seriously, out. This place is seriously. amazing. You guys have been nothing but awesome. So thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks bro. man. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are, set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.